So uh, our next guest um, will prove that I said that right, right? He's like an efficiency genius, right? No, seriously, he can like take three steps out of your day and like save you hundreds of thousands of dollars. When I say three steps, I mean you can walk three steps, right? <laughs> so Will's a partner here. Will, um, come on up and tell us what we need to know. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to 3BR Distillery. Thank you for all for coming today. Happy Earth Day. Um, speaking of Earth Day, I figured I'd kind of center my subjects of my discussion today around that. Um, like Eric mentioned, when I'm not here at 3BR Distillery, I'm a continuous improvement engineer at a large food manufacturer here in Jersey. And they have been focusing on productivity and cost reduction and strategic planning. So I wanted to share with you guys some ways that you can reduce uh, pollution in your own lives or your processes or your businesses uh, by sharing some principles of lean manufacturing. So lean manufacturing is used globally around the world. Uh, it was actually started in Japan with the Toyota production system. And there's an easy acronym to remember what they all are. There's eight different wastes that are identified. And the first step always is trying to identify those wastes in your daily life in your business processes, in your production, depending on whatever you're doing. So the acronym is TIM Woods, T-I-M-W-O-O-D-S. And each one of those stands for a different ways. So the first one is T, T stands for transportation, right? So transportation can be reduced. It typically can't be eliminated. So you want to try to reduce your transportation as much as possible. So this could mean maybe supplies coming to your business or once they're in your business itself, where are they moving, right? Trying to move things closer together, combining transportation routes, um, or anything else that you're moving materials around, right? Reducing that will definitely reduce costs, especially with going green and pollution that comes along with transportation, you'd be reducing that as well. The next letter is I. I stands for inventory. I don't know what everyone's businesses are, but typically almost every business has some type of inventory whether it's actual goods and services that you have, could be equipment that you carry around, uh, but inventory can always be reduced if possible to try to save you on cost, it saves you on storage, it saves you on capital that you might spend on the inventory ahead of time, and it saves you on searching time typically. The next letter is M. M is for motion. So it talks about the person, right? You moving around, like that three steps that Eric was just talking about, uh, but also repeatable processes tend to be within every business or production, right? So if you have a repeatable process and you can reduce the motion involved in that, you might save someone some ergonomic trouble, you might save someone energy, right? They won't be as tired at the end of the day, or even yourself, right? So those are the first three, T-I-M. The next one is W. W stands for waiting. So waiting could be you waiting for your customer, it could be your customer waiting for you. It could be you waiting on your equipment to finish. Sometimes waiting isn't really that easy to see. Um, a lot of people, when they're waiting, they'll fill their time with something, but that what you fill your time with might not be adding value. So waiting is something that's really tough to eliminate or reduce, but if you can identify it, that's the first step. Then there's two O's that follow. So the first O is over-processing. The example I like to give for overprocessing is trying to cut a steak with a chainsaw. It's just overkill, right? Um, the other thing that goes along with overprocessing is when you don't have the right equipment to do the job. So you do extra work just to get the job done. So it's always about balance. It's trying to make sure that what you need to do aligns with the tools or services or team to do the job right. The next O is overproduction. So overproduction is the worst waste of them all, typically because every single process that you do might have transportation waste, it might have motion waste, inventory that goes along with it. So when you overproduce, you do all those wastes again and again and again. So trying to match your customer demand to what you produce is key. And this could be for services or production. It could be for anything that goes along in your own life, right? Always trying to balance that demand in your life to what you are producing. The D stands for defects, right? Which is stuff that your customer is not willing to pay for. 
right? You want to make sure that your standards that you have for your own products and services <laughs> match what the customer is looking for. If your standards are way up here, but the customer would have been satisfied with something down here, then you're not really providing what the customer wants, and you find more defects in your own work, right? The same in reverse. If you're producing something that doesn't have the right quality specs, your customer won't buy your product, and you lose the customer. So <clears throat> that's the first seven. The last one is skills. It's always making sure that you put your team in the right place to do the job. Unutilized skills is sometimes one of the biggest ways could lead to demotivated employees. It could lead to a waste in time, money, and effort in many ways. And all those wastes comprise the lean manufacturing uh, function. So that's all I have for you guys today. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to ask a question. So you don't get off that easy. So run this back too, because I, I, I noticed you talked about skills, which is really, really important. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we talk about, we have students come in at, at, at fresh out of the school. They don't really have the skill set necessarily the experience, things of that nature. We all are CEOs and have, so many of us might be the CEO and the janitor, all those hats, right? So sure. at what point, you know, the, like where are we finding that skill waste? What's some, maybe some, some, some ideas where we are wasting our, our skills or our, our staff skills? Like give me, give me something, I'm trying to wrap my head around that. Yeah, definitely. Um, something that's really interesting, especially with students, for example, right? Bringing in, say, an intern or someone who may not have a lot of skills. The cool thing about it is most likely they're coming at it from a whole different perspective that you might not see, right? So the first decision that you always want to do is figure out what kind of work can you provide for the student coming in that would give value to your business and would build them as a person, right? Because they will eventually bring that value back into your business because you're coaching them through it. Not to mention, you'll already get that coaching experience right, by working them through the processes, they're bringing another perspective, and then you can improve your processes with that combination. Also, it's always great when you bring in somebody new to give them a project that they can see all the way through, right? Especially with someone like an intern who's coming in who may not have a lot of skills. Especially with that situation, when you have an objective that you want them to complete, by the end of that internship or that starting uh, position, they will have accomplished something, they'll feel really good about themselves, they'll be building that experience, and you will have gained value out of the experience as well with your business. Anybody got another question? Because I'm putting them to work. Yeah, feel free. <laughs> Take my brain. Go for it. Nobody? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go. Yeah. So, in the same vein, um, the, the CEO is the CEO and the janitor. Yeah. So I would say in those situations, the first thing you should do is try to structure the work that you want to get accomplished, right? So what that means is it, it could be writing it all out, right? It could be coming up with a regular occurrence for when that work is completed. It could be creating the standard procedure for doing that work. Once you do all those things, it really simplifies what that work is, and then you know exactly what you need this person to do, or even for yourself. Scheduling your own time is much easier when you have a standard procedure that you can repeat. And plus, then you can always get better at it once you start repeating that procedure. So first thing always is try to define the process. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah. Okay, going back to skill, what skill do you think the small business need the most? Mm. That, is, <laughs> that is a really tough question. Um, Number one skill I would say is determination, for sure. Um, being able to face the problem and not give up is the number one skill, guaranteed. And also, and being flexible. Thank you, Taylor. Uh, yeah, I would say those two are probably the top skills. And then additionally, it never hurts to have a good sense of money. <laughs> Definitely, because the whole thing will be uncertain the entire time. 
as an entrepreneur, as a small business owner, you don't believe that anybody else can do what you do better than you or up to your standards. Yeah. And yeah. also, yeah. which could then destroy your business. So is there a formula that, again, not for Yeah, no, it's very true. And that's why I brought that create a standard procedure, right? Really outline the expectations that you're looking for, because then you and whoever's doing the work, right? It's transparent in expectations. Um, and that is a really uh, interesting topic to bring up as well, because management skills don't always come along with starting to start your own business, right? It's, it's not like an easy thing you can always just pick up on, right? So you kind of have to practice that and like develop that coaching side with almost no practice. So yeah, but, yeah, go ahead. I was, I was just going to revert back that creating your standard process is the first step always so that the transparency is clear. You have to know who it is. It's Eric, first of all, I just step back and say, he's the creative person. His mind doesn't stop. You can sometimes look close and you can see the puppets smoking out of his ears. So but I, think... I don't want to deal with the creative side though. I try to sometimes add in. He's just like, you're, you're fine. You're going to be happy. <laughs> He did keep me out of jail. <laughs> but uh, you have to know what your expertise is and trust. Yeah. He, he mentioned that yeah. uh, it's really getting getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. So if you have, there's a task that you need done, you do really well. If there is somebody who can do it 70% as good as you, let it go. Let them do it. Yeah. We all make mistakes. <laughs> Sorry, on the topic of like delegating, I, I can't speak for everybody. I've heard that that comes with like, over time, like just through maturing in business. Like you learn, there are people who are extremely talented out there. You're not the only talented, and that you've got to trust and empower the people around you. And or you learn who you are. What are the things you thrive at? And you know what? Let other people around you let them do it. Let them do the things like my stuff. Sometimes I'm working next to them, I'm like, oh shit, yours is better than mine. And <laughs> no, that's recognizing so that and, and, and let them have that moment. Why not? And Absolutely. It comes with maturity because I used to think my client only wants me. But no, there are other people who are as good or maybe sometimes better than you, depends on the task. And that's the best part about building the team is that hopefully everyone who comes yeah, onto the team is an expert in something. That's, I'm like, oh no, oh no, I gotta compete. <laughs> they, you know, they push me to. And you guys built a really solid team here. I agree. Um, you know, we have a really good team here for sure at Ruby Art. Everyone does an amazing job, um, and we wouldn't be able to do it without them. Nice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Everybody, give a little round of applause. Woo! Woo!